Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Legacy Insights. I'm your host for today, Megan Sora, and I'm so excited to kick off this exclusive series where we explore the incredible legacy of Bahamas Faith Ministries International and its impact on so many lives. Today, we're shining a spotlight on our upcoming talent jam and sitting down with a few of this year's judges who themselves were once part of the very same platform. They've gone on to build incredible careers, all thanks to the opportunities BFMI has provided. Now, let's dive into these amazing stories with your interview host for today, our very own youth pastor here at BFMI, Dr. E. Corey Roll. Pastor Corey, take it away. Blessings all, man. Listen, we we have an exciting segment with you guys here as, as it pertains to Talent Jam. The legacy continues and we have a legend with us, man, a young man that I, I, I discovered at a very young age, and I was in H.O. Nash, you know, he had these locks on, he used to be singing, you know what I mean, uh, you know, and the list goes on, man, he's one of my favorite artists growing up, his name is Orlando Francis, I may be wrong, am I correct? Orlando Francis Miller, which uh, you Orlando Francis <laughs> Miller, man of many surnames, <laughs> aka Orlando, how you doing, man? I'm great, man, good to be here. I want to welcome you back here on the road to uh, Talent Jam, of course, Talent Jam has been around for plenty, plenty years, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, you had, you had legends like Peter Ronks, you had yourself uh you had selector you had christian massive you had geo who else you had in that man man christian massive yeah man there, there was so much so, so much many of past through that dollar platform. bill yeah dollar bill yeah. yes sir yes sir yeah. now as it pertains to you as a recording mm -hmm. artist you started at a very young age except mm -hmm. for christ uh, you came up the streets yeah. Um, predominantly in the where, 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 what area that you were roaming and causing in, problems in, in the grove in the, the grove he's a grove boy Back then, it's to be the Nike boys. If you're, if you're under 40 something, I'm gonna give raise the age. I still in my 20s. You probably wouldn't know what that was. You know what I mean? So, as I came to London, what gave, how did you discover that you had the art to sing? From, I was a little child. Music was something that I always found myself, you know, doing. You know, mm -hmm. when I was going through situations, music was my medication. Whenever I sing, whatever tribulation I was going through, it, 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 it soothed my spirit. It caused me to have a more relaxed mindset. Yeah. So music was always there. I wrote my first song when I was about seven. I didn't know where that passion for singing came from until later down when I was in my 20s when I got to meet my dad, you know, and I found my dad and realized that, hey, singing runs in my blood mm. bloodline. So, you know, you know, um, music and the arts was, all, was always a part of me. With Talent Jam, of course, this year, it's themed, the legacy continues mm -hmm. as we recognize and remember those um, that contributed so much, man. Mm -hmm. Dr. Miles Mono Richie, uh, Pastor Richard Pinder, of course, mm -hmm. the Parks, uh, Pastor Levada and Miguel Parks, mm -hmm. and the list just goes on and on. Your direct connection to Bahamas Faith Ministries and then led the Talent Jam. Just give us a quick overview of that. Well, um, me and Peter Runks, we grew up in the same area, and we were always looking for a platform to share our gift. You know, so me and Peter, we would hang out, write music, go to different parties, clubs, and sing, you know, and when he changed his life, he invited me to um, an event where at the time, Pastor Dave, Pastor Carlos Reed, and the Youths Against Violence crew, they had a meeting with um, the then sitting Prime Minister Hubert, the Honorable Hubert Ingram. Mm -hmm. And so I was passing, I, you know, then downtown, and they saw me and they called me, and you know, I saw him, and then we started to reason, and they just told me about Christ. And at that time in life, I, I was really tired of the life I was living. I wanted better, and so I gave my life to Christ. They invited me here to the Ham State Ministry, and at that time, they had a platform that I think was suitable for what I was really looking for at that time. I wanted to change, and now I was able to be around people who are doing exactly what I want to do. I always, even though I was singing um, to secular events, my music was always positive. Mm -hmm. And so now coming to Bahamas Faith Ministry where there was talent jam, where there was utilize, 
there was a platform mm -hmm. that the church saw suitable for people like myself. And so I was really excited and felt in love with Bahama Faith Ministries and the people at that time because now there was artists that came before me who experienced going into the studio. I never experienced that before. And so they were able to show me the way. Mm -hmm. People like Christian Massive and, and others, they were able to show me that, hey, this is how it's done. And so that is how I you know, um, got connected with Talent Jam and what I like and so on. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. When it comes to artists who are out there watching this, and you know, a lot of times they make the excuse they're waiting on God. <laughs> and then, um, you know, you have others who just don't know what the next step is going to be. How important is Talent Jam to the development of an upcoming artist? I think it's very, very important. I, I think it's very, very important, especially if you are a born again mm -hmm. Christian, a person who is kingdom minded and want to really go to the next level in your career. Because there are people who will be here who already did the went through the trial and error, error phase. And so you don't have to go through what they went through. Mm -hmm. They are able to show you the way to, uh, so that they don't have to go through the same, the, the same thing. So I think, you know, artists out there, Christian artists who are looking to take their music industry to music ministry to another level, Talent Jam is the place to be yeah. because they're going to be the right people there in the place to show you the way and to direct you. Right, man. Right on the screen right now, you're going to see uh, our legacy um, website. You can go and click on sign up right now digitally. Uh, you want to be a part of that. Of course, there's a sign up. There's a, there's a date that's going to be cut off. So you want to sign up right now. It's very important because why? It's, it's that time for you to make that next step from ages uh, 13 to 25. So listen to me. Sign up if you sing. Um, if you if you rap, if you do reggae, you do poetry, you do dance, you do you play any instruments, whatever the case is, this is your opportunity to get on the big stage, man, and display your God given talent. And it isn't always about winning. I remember, I remember, I was in a talent jam, and I was up against Peter Peter Rungs. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I didn't, many come, I didn't even come <laughs> second. I come third. Many you know, <laughs> many times I didn't win. Yeah, but one thing I could say. A lot of people, they look at me now and see what I'm doing yes. in the industry. Yeah. What I want you guys to understand is that Talent Jam was the platform. Mm -hmm. Utilize was the platform yeah. that helped cultivate the yes. gift in me and gave me platforms and connected me with people to get me to where I'm at today. And so I think this is the place that you should be right here at Bahamas State Ministry. You know, sign up because trust me, this is an opportunity you don't want to miss. You have great people in the place who knows the industry who could show you the way to go. All you gotta do is some you, know, you don't know everything, but there are people who's gonna be in the place who knows what you don't know and who is willing to show you. So come out, man, sign up. Trust me, it's gonna be amazing. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. November first, Friday, November first, seven p.m. is where all roads gonna be leading here at Bahamas Paper and Streets International. At the Miles Imano Diplomat Center off Michael Road. Make sure you be in the place. All right. Looking forward to seeing you, you, and you. If you know a friend who has a gift, man, listen to me. It's their opportunity. Listen to me. Share this information with them. And I thank you, man, for stopping by to the road to Talent Jam, man. The legacy continues. And of course, as we continue to, to keep in, in mind of all those that, 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 that paved the way for us, you know, uh, this gives a quick nugget that you might remember from Pastor Miles and Pastor Richard. Being in your life also, uh, you had Pastor Levard and Riddell Parks. Anything that you could remember um, as you grew up and developed here in this ministry? Well, what, what I would say is continue to believe in yourself and that you are a leader. When I first, before I came to this church, I thought I was a nobody. And I thought that nothing good would ever come from me. But the teachings... I got from Pastor Richard, uh, Pastor Miles, and everyone here at this church have changed my mindset. Caught, caused me to really believe in myself that I am great. I'm the son of a king, and so if I'm a son of the king, I'm a prince, and so I am royalty. And there is nothing out there that I 
see that I desire that I do not deserve because I am royalty. Oh, so God. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, ladies and gentlemen. The road, the talent jam. This is landlord. This is yours. DJ Counselor. Oh, so God. <laughs>
1995 is my was my first time I experienced uh, um, Talent Jam. You know, uh, man, I never had uh, an experience like that. Um, this is when I first started to hear uh, groups like Christian Massive and everything like that. And I mean, this place used to be, you know, vibrating. I, yeah. I thought yeah. the walls were going to actually come <laughs> down. <laughs> hey, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So Talent Jam then, um, you competed as an artist at Talent not, Jam? Not at that particular time. Okay. I, I became um, a in the competition in 1996. In 96, okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. You remember any artists who was in, in, in around that time competing at, 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 you know? Yeah, I remember um, there was, I think it was Joey. Uh, I think they were, what, what the, the group was called? United. United. Yeah. 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 United. Yeah. Uh, and a number of different um, artists. I think um, um, there's a lot of names. You know, I don't want no one throwing those stones at me because I didn't remember their name. Uh, you know, uh, at the time, but um, Marky, I think Marky Marks. Yeah. You know, uh, the list goes on. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, I think it's early '90s when it came to gospel reggae. That was the most dominant genre in the gospel arena. Yeah. There was few rappers. But it was just everything was reggae. Everything was you know, reggae, and particularly dancehall reggae. <laughs> hey, everything was dancehall. You had your reggae. Christian yes. massive, you had your Peter Ronks, you had your Dollar Bill, you yeah. had your Ecclesia. Yes, you had um, what's the next Ruby? Who am I missing? You had Selector. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who uh, else? Peter Ronks. Peter Ronks. Yes. Um, well, I think we you get you are you are Geo. Geo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. forget Geo. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we are close to almost ten artists. You know what I mean? And, and the, the, these fellas, <laughs> it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so bad. Talent Jam has been a staple here uh, in Nassau, Bahamas, and mm. Bahamas Faith Ministries. And it was an opportunity also for artists who weren't allowed to sing that genre in their churches, right? Because there was a period, I think, in around ninety two, uh, on between ninety two and ninety five, where churches didn't allow gospel reggae gospel rap within their churches and no. so it was it was it was a, a tool being used for predominantly outreach right you know um we had something called peace on the streets back then with uh dr carlos reed now and others were going into our communities big sound system and carrying these artists and presenting the gospel that was a different sound to our communities the inner city communities who never heard the gospel presented right in, in, in a sound that reminded them of the sound they like. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it was like reggae. Every time you heard about reggae, it was your Bob Marley right. or your gun tones. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now you hear melodies about, about being saved and, you know, the gospel itself being presented to these individuals. Mm. And I personally, as a young man, was in grade around 9, 10 then, started attending these outreaches and right. being a part. And I was watching gun toting, you know what I mean? Uh, dope dealing, dope smoking individuals, literally Real surrendering their life, mm, you yeah. know what I mean? Giving up their 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 way of living, you know, uh, for, for God, man. And so the, the that period where the Bahamas was introduced to gospel reggae and rap and how that was accepted, yes. um, how that was used to reach the loss was an amazing experience uh, for a young man. And this gentleman was one of the gentlemen, I mean, when he came out with Satan as a liar, it took the country by storm. And oh. fuck, I think you even traveled some countries. Let's talk about that, you know, when Satan, Satan is a lie hit, we, we were transitioning from tape to CD. Yes, yes. You were right in the middle of that uh, transition um, because when I, when I uh, before I released Satan is a Liar, all of the um, all of the artists at the time, including Christian Massive, when they put out a release, it was on cassette. Yeah. And when I came onto the scene, I came onto the scene with, with cassette and CDs. And listen, I, I, I've never seen uh, music um, just fly away so fast, you know, like in, in one or two days. I mean, you, you just order music, cool. you're reordering, you know, you're reordering a couple of times in one week and, and so forth. You know, that was very, yeah. very big, you yeah. know, back in those days. And, you know, you look at it like it, it was it was like, you know, everyone was able to get like a, a copy. Yeah. You know, in their hands, they they wanted the actual thing, you know, in their hands, yeah. man. You know, and for some of you who don't know, I'm gonna get in trouble for Dennis letting y'all know. All right, when he was said to me, when he's when he's talking about product coming out of his hand, these fellas gotta walk up uh, to Friendly Fort 
and get something brand new yeah. off the lot. Yeah. Brand new. Brand we ain't new. talking about 10 CDs here. Yeah, we're, yeah. Talking about, we're talking about shipments yeah. coming in of yeah. CDs. I'm talking about truckload of shipments yeah. and tapes. I was there. I witnessed yeah. this and it was like, whoa. Yeah. People were supporting the gospel on a serious basis where you were walking away tangible. Yeah. Like this era where you're looking for people to download to get 99 cents and you're going to spit that between <laughs> whoever the distributing company is and the person who uploaded <laughs> for you. It's, it's, it's just a different time. Yeah, it's very, very different, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I could, you know, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. But um, those days, I, I tell you, there were, there were like days where, like, literally, we, I was seeing at least about $30,000 in a day. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, although it wasn't about the money, but yeah. it was, the yeah. people wanted the material. Yeah. You know? So, man, that was, yeah. that was crazy. It was a time. Mm -hmm. That was a time. And so, <laughs> We moved to a different era now. <laughs> and I think it's important to realize that um, as an artist, like the Bible says, your gift is going to make room for you. Yes. Um, these 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 men back then, you know, women also, they were, they were female artists. You had, um, who you had then? You had, had um, Rache. You had, yeah. You had, you had Rache. You had uh, uh, Bonafide, Bonafide from Freeport. From Freeport. Yeah. 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 Keller Sweeten. Yeah. Keller. Yeah. Can't, can't forget. forget. Keller. Yeah. Keller's a veteran. Uh, female gospel artists. Yes. Um, so females were always there, but I will say this, not a shame to say it, men always dominated. Yeah. And and still hasn't changed to this very day. Right. Um, but the women contribution was was definitely needed. It was great, greatly supported. And many of them are still out there today, uh, doing great works. So we had um Jamel, I think was also a female group. Yeah, that Jamel. Came from, I did it from um Turk, not Turks, uh, Trinidad. Yeah, I think it's Trinidad. Trinidad. And Tobago. so we had women, you know, who came and, 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 and you know, um, Christian Penn. Yeah, she had a hit. She yes. died tragically in a car accident in, um, in Freeport. Right. Uh, and the list goes on. Of course, they're, they're going to be names we have forgotten. But these men, listen to me, they spend time in the word. Their songs were potent. And the day if it's played, I get, I, I hear younger I, I heard you saying, I, I, yeah, I, I remember that when I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah my, my Grammys played that. And, and so the, the, these are our veterans. They, they're going to go down as some of the pace setters. And he mentioned Christian Massive. Christian Massive, whether, whether, some of you may not know, is will be go down as one of the godfathers as pertaining to that. He was, he was the pinnacle when it came to that because what he brought forth, and he took the beating when it came to the gospel music because he can tell you of churches he would run out of. Not yeah. allowed to come back. You right. know what I mean? The list goes on. Yeah. But when he touched ground in those communities, man, people flock. Yeah. Like, what? This Ricky? What? And he making sense? And so forth. And so as many artists as we bring, they would always point to say, yeah, man, I remember growing up here and said, um, you know, uh, Christian master. Yes. And then as I came along long, um, a few years later, I came around 97. Yeah. 97. The movement kicked off in 92. Yeah. Kick, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. I think about Matured 92. Matured in 95. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I came around, you had one or two that had kind of already started to fade away, but the impact was there. They had artists that popped up and filled Bahamas Faith Ministries. That's how the movement was. And so when you heard conferences like Youth Alive and, and the Peace on the Street movement and so forth, man, they had a tape, I think it was called what? Um, uh, but Peace on the Street. Peace on the Street, yeah. It was, it was a compilation? Yeah, it was a compilation. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, maybe over... Could have been maybe over twelve different artists, right? Um, that was on that yeah. on that track, you know. But you know what? Thinking about uh, that particular history, even before I knew um, um, what was available um, in the gospel area, um, I was I was fresh from off the streets, mm. not not too long ago. But I really enjoyed, you know, reggae music. I used to play reggae music straight through, you know, because. I had a I had a sound system. I just used to be playing uh, music, but you know when I when I made that switch, when I uh, and everything, I I remember praying. Mm. I say, Lord, listen, I I say, man, you got to save some save some of the artists. Yeah, I, you know, I start even calling some names. Yeah. I say, man, you know these people who I listen to, I yeah. say, listen to Buju and stuff like that. You know, uh, Lieutenant Stitchy yeah. and 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 Papa San and yeah. the list goes on, yeah. Mister Vegas. I used to be pray. I used to man, listen. Well, he, he answered your prayer. He answered your prayer. Yeah. Like, well, Vegas was safe a little bit, and then he went. He went somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Stitchy and Papa. He made a withdrawal. He made a withdrawal. Yeah. He yeah. made a withdrawal. Yeah. Hey, let's move on. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll didn't come over yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. didn't answer the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. And and when I when I came here to uh, uh, Bahamas Faith Ministries during the time of 
you know, talent jam and mm-hmm. things like that. This is when, like, it really, really hit me, you know what I'm saying? And I remember just, when you know, taking um, um, Christian Massive music back home with me, and I was just blasting it because, yeah. you know, I mean, just, I like reggae music, you know? And so I needed this, and this, you know, all this was giving me energy and inspiration at the mm-hmm. same time. This was before I even had one song to sing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, man. Before we go anywhere, we're going to give you a little clip of Select a Man um, at one of our conferences. At one of our, and so listen to me. If you didn't get to experience what it was back in the early 90s, early 2000s, you're going to get a little clip right here. Don't go anywhere, man. They'll be talking about Talent Jam. The legacy continues. Oh, so godly. So since me and the YAB crew, we might as well continue going that way. I want you to put your hands up for another gangbanger that's gone straight. Now using his talent for God. Satan is a liar, kick him in the fire. I say Satan is a liar, kick him in the fire. Put your hands together and welcome to Lecta. Let's go put your hands together for Selecta. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. How y'all doing tonight? How y'all doing? I give thanks and prayers to my King Jesus Christ. They call me Selecta. I selected the King, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. You understand? If y'all walking down the road and the devil come up to you all, what y'all can tell him? Y'all can tell him, come in. Say, devil, you's a liar. Say, devil, you's a liar. Uh, listen, man. Listen. Listen. Say, Satan is a liar. Kick him in the fire. I used to work with Satan, but now I retire. Yes, he is a liar. Kick him in the fire. I used to work with Satan, but now I retire. Listen, people. So listen. My desire is to get lifted higher. All Satan is a liar. Listen. My heart desire is to get lifted higher. So I pray to Jesus, Jesus lift me higher. No, I'm not a liar. He is the Messiah. The one who heals the sick and the one who wants to pray. Satan is a liar. Kick him in the fire. I used to work for Satan. Now I retire. Yes, he is a liar. Kick him in the fire. I used to work for Satan. But now I listen. Jesus is faithful and just to restore my soul. So I decide to work on his payroll. And his payroll is the streets of gold where the things never die and never turn old boys and girls young and old don't you run from the heat you'll end up in the cold salvation for the young and salvation for the old come on join his payroll satan is a liar kick him in the fire i used to work with satan now i retire yes he is a liar kick him in the fire i used to work with satan Hope you guys enjoyed that little clip right there, man. Listen to me. It was an amazing journey. Um, like I say, birthing from Talent Jam at our conferences and so forth. Let's dive in. Of course, this year's Talent Jam moved from October. is a youth month event for years. Right. To now November as a part of the legacy events. And this is actually the, the kickoff. Mm-hmm. The first event of the legacy event as we um, commemorate those who have passed um, 10 years now. We're going to talk about the impact of Dr. Miles Monroe and Dr. Richard Pinder mm-hmm. and also um, Manifest and, and his wife, um, um, Riddell. Right. So basically, what, what can you say as pertaining to Pastor Miles and how he has impacted on this ministry at whole along with Pastor Richard, your life? Hey, Pastor Miles, I mean, hats off. Um, Dr. Miles teach me a lot about my identity, you know, uh, what I didn't even know about. You know, I, I, I did not know that I had uh, potential uh, to do um, anything that, you know, that is possible, mm. you know. And, and, you know, Dr. Miles used to say things very simple. He said, listen, uh, it ain't about money. He said, but listen, he say, bake some cookies and just go around in the neighborhood and pass it out. Right. And he said, 
you're going to find out that some person's going to come back to you and say, hey, any more of those cookies? You know, and, you know, like, like it's an interesting way of already marketing, marketing yourself without trying to market yourself, you know, because it's like, uh, I, I did this a couple of times also with artists who I came in contact with, you know, when they did uh, their music. And I said, listen, your music isn't really qualified to sell. You should give it away. You know, they didn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes people took it, you know, a little personal. But if they had taken my advice, you know, one year later, they still wouldn't have been stuck with all the music that they had, but they never was able to sell. You understand? Because I was, they didn't know that I was, I was sharing that, that influence that I got from Dr. Miles. Yeah. You understand? Hey, give it away. Yeah. If it's that good, yeah. they're going to come back. Right. You understand? So you, you, you can't sell something, you know, that people don't are like. curious mm. of and don't like or something like that. Yeah. It's difficult to sell that. Difficult. Also, Dr. Richard Pender, man. Dr. Richard Pender, he saw me one day and he um, helped me with, he spoke to me very briefly on something. He said, when I was passing him, right, because I, I used to wear like, um, I, I used to um, dress at the time. Um, I used to wear like a just say a with a button up shirt and shirt or the pants and stuff like that, but it used to be like kinda a little tacky sometimes, right? And Dr. Richard Pender, he stopped me and he say, Hey, you know, if you tuck your shirt, you will look better. And I never forgot that, right? And you know what? I went into the uh the, the restroom and I did that, you know? And I felt much better and I felt as though I even looked better. Yeah. And you know, everything like that, you know. So you know, I had points, and, and this was without insult, you know what I'm saying? And he wasn't, like, lording over me, telling me what to do. He was just, you know, giving me um, that, that type of advice, you know. And I, I picked up some, some things um, also from, from Dr. Uh, Richard Pinder um, as well because, I mean, hey, he was like the, 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 the co-pilot, you understand? You know, it's it's not as easy being a co-pilot because you have to you have to um, ride along mm. the driver yeah. with the driver. You know what I'm saying? So, but there's a lot of things that I benefit um, learning from him. I remember his topic. The uh, he was talking about the principle of print uh, of, of uh, process mm. principles of process. You know, there's a there's principles to to process that a lot of people don't understand. And I, these things, they, they, they're stuck with me. You know, I, I can't get it out of me. Yeah. So every time I, I have an opportunity to talk to people, I talk to people and they say, what college I been to, you know, sometimes. And I say, I ain't been to no college. I was, I was surrounded by people who used to, you know, share um, mind-blowing information, you know. So uh, this is the kind of thing and uh, the, the legacy that I got even from um, Dr. Miles and Dr. Richard Pender. Levard Parks, like I, I, I share about uh, Levard Parks um, at another uh, time, um, but there's a lot of things that, you know, me and Levard uh, were able to connect on. Mm. Similarly, just like me and you, um, you know, um, you, you, we, we never talked this, but um, we were blood wash DJs. Yeah. You yeah, remember? Sure well. we were, sure you know, well. we were the we were the blood wash DJs. You know, we were first the, Christian DJ. Group. Hey, we used to go around and we had a banging sound system. We used to yeah, we had a sound system. Everywhere like we go, we just we just knock everything out of the park, man. Me and DJ Counselor, yeah. you know, so Baptist uh, parade, yes, parade, anything, beaches, anything. Everything. I telling you, man, you know, so Levard Parks came along the same kind of lines, you know, whereas he, he was uh, had that DJ yeah. um, background and everything like that. So we were able to connect on on the technical side and, you know, uh, uh, with a lot of things, yeah. you know, and and his um, his wife, um, uh, Riddell, you know, she she is very, very inspirational and, and she, she very, very um um, spiritual as it relates to how she go about things and so forth. Very good um, at um, writing dramas mm -hmm. and skits and, you know, you name it. She wrote a lot of commercials and everything. Me and Parks used to do commercials together. I mean, the list goes on, man. So this year, Talent Jam is themed The Legacy Continues. And, you know, the award, the overall winner award would be, you know, presented as the Manifest and Riddell Parks Award. And so this is the way we are remembering them. Um, thankful for the for Pastor Miles and Pastor Richard who met 
I think they attended old Old Roberts University yes, together. Yes. And because of their vision, the I think Pastor, I think Pastor Dave been Pastor Dave also, yeah, yes, yeah. Pastor Dave. You know, the vision just came to life. Yeah. You know, and 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 anytime God gives you something and you're obedient, and one of the sermons Pastor Richard, a serious, I should say, he spoke on was trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And anyone who has accomplished anything great can tell you all that trusting the process sometimes you 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 question you know should i start this should i complete this yeah. should i finish this but allowing god you know trusting in god through that whole process and this is an example of trusting the process mm -hmm. you, know, you have men here who are talking who benefited who grew from being a part of that process yes um and now have impacted others you know i mean we're now family men we are you know we've, we, we've done music we've inspired others we've led folks to christ and anyone who's watching this now talent jam may be the first event or second event that you're now joining being a part L allow that process to be birth don't allow fear to continue to make excuses because again this starts from age 13 to 25 so if you're in that age bracket, you don't have the luxury to be playing around talking about, I know if I'm ready yet. Mm. I, I wait on God. Really? You know, we're not using that excuse anymore in 2024. So listen to me, man. Right to the bottom of the screen right now, sign up. All right. It's online. Just click on that right there, man. Put that in. Sign up. And guess what? Going to be cash prize again this year. Um, leading up to Talent Jam, of course, there's going to be a preliminary where we're going to hear what you're presenting, making sure what you're presenting is clean is uh stage ready and of course gospel or inspirational what, what, what are some of the the areas that is uh you have, you have um rap okay reggae uh -huh. dance of course praise and worship okay um you have solos you okay. have groups okay um comedy any you spoken know, words all the time okay all the time okay spoken word i i need yeah see life as life sees don't sign up <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't sign up. No. Uh, I won't be signing up. All right, uh, I won't be signing up. No, nah, I, I think I'll, I'll probably get one of my daughters. Uh, Th that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, because yeah, she she's really oh, that, into that, spoken that, word. That's really legacy, yeah. Hey. Oh, man. That's going to be great, man. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd yeah, be, man. You know, and so if I, if I want to sign up in the, in the singing part, like, I love the Lord. Is that right, no? No. Who's the real Superman? Just, just Jesus. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Stick to what was waking. Talent Jam. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> that Talent Jam, right? <laughs> Friday, November 1st, 7 p.m. right here at Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Sign up. All right. But if you sounded like me this just now, don't sign up. Don't sign up. God bless you all, man. Also, Godly. Also. Gee. In our 1999 Talent Jam here at BFM Diplomatic Center, we've got a group coming up in the category of singing. And uh, I like their name, so we want you to make some noise for them as we continue to keep the energy in the house. Give it up for Pure and Natural.
fears You will never have to worry As long as I am near If I could take my brush I would paint a perfect day If I could master all my creativity I would say the perfect phrase Words that I would say But only go so far They're just ordinary words From an ordinary heart Just an ordinary love From an ordinary guy But I know someone who's greater I know someone who loves you more than I, I. And if I had my way, I'd through the night like a prince in shining armor. I would love to see the fire, and then I would love. Who never ever falls I would be the one to rescue I would be the one you call the bow But there is one who is Much more I could be And if you put your faith in him You will have security No They're just ordinary words From an ordinary heart It's just an ordinary love From an ordinary guy But I know someone who's greater I know someone who loves you more If I can take my brush I would paint a perfect day Get master all my creativity And I would say perfect phrase No Worst I would say goes They're just ordinary words From an ordinary heart It's just an ordinary love From an ordinary guy Welcome back here, man. Listen, we'll be talking about Talent Jam. The legacy continues. We have a gentleman who's no stranger to me, definitely no stranger to you, and who was grace the stage of Talent Jam and actually was a winner in our R&B category. We have today with us, Mr. Sammy Starr. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sammy Poitier, a.k.a. Sammy Starr. That's how long I've known him. Yeah, yeah, And so yeah. if you're watching this right now, we can dive into the history and where did Sammy Star evolve from? So just give us a little journey on who was Sammy Star and uh, sorry, who was Sammy Poitier oh, yeah. and yeah, how he yeah. became Mr. Yeah. Sammy Star. Yeah, okay. Well, Island Boy definitely grew up in in North Andrus, primary school, high school, the whole nine. And of course, I grew up in church. Um, my father, Reverend Oswald Poitier, um, Reverend Sabrina Poitier, both ministers in church. And of course, my dad, being a musician, plays all instruments: drums, bass, guitar, piano. 
wind instruments, everything. So I grew up with instruments in the home, music in the home. He was always singing, always playing the guitar. And, um, you know, me being in church all the time, he put me on the drums. I discovered I could play drums. Mm. Uh, put me on the keys. I, I discovered I could play keyboard, wow. you know, you put a mic in my hand. I discovered I could sing, <laughs> you know. And so I grew up in church and he made sure that I used those talents in church and developed them in church. So that, wow. that was my journey of um, getting into music, of course. There you go. So listen to me. Parents, is important for your involvement of the development of your child. And so make sure your child is going to church. Make sure they're using their gifts and talent for the kingdom of God. So um, you now, you you're, you're started out from Andres, came mm -hmm. to Nassau. Let's, how, what's your involvement and how you got uh, connected with Talent Jam itself? Well, um, I came to Nassau to go to what was then COB. Mm -hmm met a lot of friends and of course me coming straight from church i was looking for the christian parents you know and so i i ended up in what was known then as scm yes student christian movement yeah. i think right and um over about 80 percent of the people there um they would sing and that's what drew me to them because they would sing uh rap and make music and all these kinds of stuff so you know i, I was there yeah and it turns out that 80 percent of them went to bfm Wow. Um, and so, you know, they all invited me and, and told me to come. And the next thing I knew, I was in church. I was in BFM like every Sunday and I just pretty much joined. I was in all the youth groups, you know, uh, making music with everybody else and uh, making new friends and just being a part of all the events and all that. And then Youth Talent Jam came up. Uh, I saw the advertisements and stuff like that. And a lot of the artists who were popular then were going to be at Youth Talent Jam. Mm. And I saw that they had a competition. And, you know, and a lot of people encouraged me to enter. And I said, OK, this would be a great opportunity for me to get this exposure for people to see that I can sing too. You know what I mean? I can play music and all that kind of stuff. And so I took that opportunity. And, you know, when I got on stage, definitely very nervous. Uh, I made my own track, my own song, the whole nine and getting ready to sing. And man, when they hit play. I heard that music over them big speakers. <laughs> Listen to me. That said something through me, bro. And um, I I won, actually. I yeah. won that competition. Yeah. People heard me sing, but what they didn't know that I was going to dance, too. Yeah. <laughs> so I started dancing, doing all the moves and stuff. People started making all kind of noise and stuff. You know, it was so much fun, man. Definitely opened my eyes because the place was packed. I mean, people everywhere. The place was packed. A lot of screaming, a lot of singing, a lot of cheering and... And that was the beginning of something mm. special, certainly. Awesome. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, you heard, you know, uh, you heard about it. You signed up, you came, and you did exceptionally well. I want to, I want to ask you a question about uh, being an artist. This, uh, I think, every artist has this challenge of dealing with fear and mm. stage fright. How were you able to manage that over the years? Um, your first time or going into a new you know, environment, not knowing how the crowd is going to respond. Right. How do you block that and just move and just get done what needs to be done? Well, see, I, I glad you used the word block because that's what I do. I yeah. sure don't get rid of it because, yeah. boy, listen to me, to this day, yeah. you know, um, um, when I go on stage to to sing or to minister or whatever I'm doing, yeah. I still get nervous wow. to this yeah. day, yeah. you know? So um, it's just a thing where you, yeah. you have to kind of channel, channel what you're doing, channel your yeah. thoughts, channel your focus yeah. and and you know and just block everything else out that's how i deal with it so wow. that's my advice to y'all <laughs> just try to find a way to block it out and focus on what you're there to do focus on that end goal and, and it helps a lot it there you go lot, yeah. there you go some advice right there from sammy star now as it comes to your 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 your, your contribution um to the gospel community, you know, you've done several songs over the years. Just give us the name of those several songs. So we're going to talk about that last song that I guess one of your recent songs. And I was like, this is nice. You know, the one's uh, featuring you and Sherwin God. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, the, the first song I actually came up with as a, as a gospel singer way back was a song called Is It Because? Mm. That song actually catapulted me, you know, to the next level. Everyone was singing that song. Um, dancing to that song and a lot of people didn't realize that I was actually a Bahamian singer until wow. I showed up on stage singing the song I had dances the whole night it, it was it, you know called they used to call me what the, the Christian the Bahamian Christian usher yeah, or something yeah, like that yeah yeah it, it was yeah. crazy but that was the first one I had many songs um since then uh, the most recent one which I think has been to date my most streamed song is the song called God Protect We Now W-E 
God protect, we now um, feature in Sherman Garden. I think that's There's what a story behind that song, a very powerful story. And, mm -hmm. you know, this shows, you know, that God has his hand on you, uh, which, is, which is very important as a believer. And every single one of us have access of having God's protective hands over our life. But just let us know about that story. Man. Um, yeah, well, you know, un unfortunately, I guess unfortunately, both. Um, I was placed in a um, in a situation where as, you know, me being um, a husband and a father, my first priority is protection. You know, um, I'm definitely a protector. And um, that was challenged that evening. Um, I got home and this was actually during the pandemic. Mm. Um, I got home, um, parked, getting out of my car to walk through my gate and go yeah. inside my home. And I was accosted, you know, wow. um, guys just showed up out of nowhere um, through me on the ground, face on the ground, and pulled out guns and put them to my head, you know, um, not allowing me to look back and look them in the face. So I don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. what their, you know, what their intentions are, none of that stuff. So, you know, that's, that has to be super scary. And it was. Um, and the whole time, you know, my, my kids are looking under the window and seeing all of this, not realizing mm -hmm. what was happening is I'm on the ground. Right. Right. And um, all they're saying is, oh, well, daddy's home or whatever, you know, thankfully, none of them came outside and it didn't draw the attention to the house. Right. And I, that's what I was praying didn't happen. And it didn't, mm -hmm. you know, the most I had it. So I just kept praying in my head. The most I had it so that these guys, they pulled my sunglasses. I'll pull my hat off. And, and then all of a sudden they stopped. And I just heard footsteps running down the street and I didn't move. I mm -hmm. still didn't move for about maybe three minutes at mm -hmm. least and then after after that i slowly got up and turned around and looked and saw that they were gone wow most traumatic experience of my entire life um took me a minute to get over that bro you know um i hear the stories all the time that was the first time that i actually experienced it firsthand thankfully it was to date the last time mm -hmm. you know and um i don't speak that on anybody yeah. bro. i i don't care how much i hate hate someone or what i don't hate anybody but how much i dislike you or don't wish the best for you um i'll never wish yeah. that on anybody yeah. it's a horrible experience and um i took to social media um because i realized this is what a lot of people talk about and i was like you know what because of my platform let me try and be an encouragement to people mm -hmm. and um i spoke about it and i told people okay i know what this is now firsthand so if you went through this Here's how you deal with this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, definitely have to pray, definitely have to meditate, definitely have to, you know, find that place, lean on God, lean on the most high to bring you through. Yeah. And of course, you know, the whole thing went viral. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from Sharon. Sharon was like, Man, this is this is powerful. It's like you're touching everyone. You have a story to tell, you have a testimony to tell. And, you know, our conversation brought tears to my eyes. Um, next day I woke up, I had an email with a demo for the song in there. And when I listened, man, it just brought everything rushing wow. through. And we recorded the song and, and the song just just took off. Yeah. And like I said, to date, it's certainly my most streamed mm. single. Yeah. 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 So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh the what is it called? The footsteps, the yeah. the journey of of, of Sammy Portia, aka Sammy Star, um, started on the talent jam stage. And of yep. course from here on He's been um, one of our foremost male artists, um, you know, in the, in, in the history of the Bahamas. Somebody I've grown, oh, I've watched growing, you know, from a from a young man from Andrus, you know, who was who was, was, was smaller, so, you know, um, you know, got probably got a few inches taller. But today, you know, I'm happy to see the yeah. achievements that he has, he, you know, he has achieved. Uh, he's a family man. He's um, a uh, multi artist awardee, you know, uh, and the list goes on, man. So thank you once again for gracing our stage. Thank you for your artistry, for the comments of the Bahamas. He's a positive young man and a great example of when you allow God to lead you. You know what I mean? And so um, we've had so many artists over the years that have come through Talent Jam. You have like the Gospel Boys, Starks. You have like uh, Iman. We have uh, persons like Peter Runks, um, Landlord, Peter. you know, Landlord. and, and, and mm -hmm. so much. Yet, uh, who else we have? Females, um, Bodine. Bodine. I remember her coming on stage. Ta-da. Ta-da. Um, and yeah. there's so much more. We've had, Man, you know, I saw a video. Uh -huh. I wonder if y'all could find that. Man, I saw a video with me and Ta-da on this stage singing You Gotta Be There. Yeah. 
<laughs> I could not believe it, bro. Like, it, like it, I believe that was yeah. Tyler Jab. Yeah. Because I saw all the stuff on the stage yeah. that we were yeah. singing. Uh, her single, yeah. uh, We Share, You Gotta Be yeah. There. Or I hope yeah. y'all should look for that. Yeah. That yeah. was crazy. So listen to me, man. Sign up today. The information's right there on the stage. Friday, November 1st. Right here at Bahamas Paper Industries International, 7 p.m. You got to sign up now. There's so many categories that you could be a part of. From if you can sing, you can play instruments. If you have a group, you can dance, uh, poetry, and the list goes on. Sign up today. The information again is on the screen. I need to see you, and I want to see what talent jam. Your cash prize also, man. You need some ching ching ching. Oh, the yeah. overall win is going to be carrying home some liquid cash, ladies and gentlemen. That's awesome. Oh, it sounds good. All right. Looking <laughs> forward to seeing you. The legacy continues. And why is Talent Jam labeled the legacy continues? Of course, um, we are commemorating um, the legacy of those that would have um, uh, tragically passed um, years ago. And of course, with Dr. Miles Manu, uh, Pastor Richard Pinder, mm -hmm. Manifesto also was a part of Talent Jam, the group Supernatural with Double Six and so forth. Um, his late wife, um, Riddell Parks and just so much more. We can just go on and on and on. The artistry of of of, of Dunham Sounds, um, Supernatural, mm -hmm. the artist himself manifests mm -hmm. is somebody um, you're going to be looking at um, giving an award in honor of him. You know, uh, it's a contribution to one of the legends of gospel of Bahamian gospel hip hop here in in the Bahamas. So the legacy continues. You know, brings back so much memories. And let's talk about the impact you would Pastor Miles would have had on your life. Yeah, I'm, I remember um, Pastor Miles, we spoke often, Yeah, obviously every time at church and even sometimes um, outside of BFM's walls. And he he actually, you know, put his hand on my shoulder for it and spoke a word over my life and said, your music is going to take you all around this world. He said, your message, your story is going to have a great impact on people's lives. And he was right. He was certainly right. You know, that's that's happened many times and, and I can see it happen a lot more in the future as I even take, you know, my, my music and ministry to a whole new level, yeah. you know? So I definitely appreciate him for that. And he was always, I mean, a huge supporter, always a huge supporter. So I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, man, thank you once again for uh, being a part of our, our artist our highlight of, of Talent Jam, the legacy continues with Mr. Sami Star. Looking forward to you. Listen to me again. Listen to me. Friday the 1st, on November, listen to me. You want to sign up and be a part of Talent Jam. Now, this stage has been a blessing to this country yep. and to the world. And it's time. It's your time. It's your time. Sign Blessings, up. George. Trudy, de, 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 DJ Counselor. Oh, so godly. Come on. Next contestant, a group of guys who really tear up youth lives. It is my boys, Double Six and Supernaturals in the house. Talent Jam, was up in the house? Are you ready for Jesus Christ up in here? Check, 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 check. I say, are you ready to play ball? You believe that Jesus saw? Uh, 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 manifest. What? Yo, yo, double six. What? What? Yo, yo, supernatural. Come on, what? Come on. Yo, yo. Yeah, you know how we do it, uh -huh. Jesus is all. Yeah, you know how we do it, uh -huh. Jesus is all. Yeah, you know how we do it, uh -huh. Jesus is all. Yeah, you know how we what? do it. Man, I'm fast, bring the rest. Yo, when I think about it, life is like a ball game. What? People come around looking for some different things. Yo. Some looking for love, some just really want to change. Yo. Some looking for fame, while others they want to steal. Some, some just want to swing. swing. Some want their finger in the wing. Some just want to hit it back, it's going ching ching. Some just want to pour against everything that they see. Some just want to sit in the stands and watch, not me. Me and double six, me hitting grand slams, G. What? The world is serious. We just will be coming like Yankee. Lord, thank thee. Do you why obtain the victory? We, we champions of life. Come on, come right on. Now. Are you ready to play ball? Jesus is all. Will you get up in your fall? Jesus is all. Never strike it on the call. Jesus is all. No, are you here to win it all? Yo, 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 he's all. Are you ready to play ball? Come on, Jesus is all. Yo, Jesus is all. Never strike it on the call. Come on, Jesus is all. No, are you here to win it all? Yo, 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 he's all. What? I rush a poor and do like a daddy panther. Hitting triples and doubles. Jesus is my answer. answer. I grab you, you know the microphone's my Santa. Hit you with limits so hard, spread the word like cancer. Jesus is the manager, the dream every amateur. Yo, you better move aside, get the challenge. What? High caliber, representing God's character. The team with the damn are ready to damage you. Yo, be from Africa. What? You can be from Zimbabwe. Get yo, yo, the tactical. Come 
ain't coming out. Yo, Jesus Christ is all. Yo, now check what? it out. You ready to play ball? Jesus is all. When you get up and you fall, Jesus is all. Never strike it on the call, Jesus is all. No, why you get up and you fall? Yo, he's all. Are you ready to play ball? Jesus is all. When you get up and you fall, Jesus is all. Never strike it on the call, Jesus is all. No, why you get up and you fall? Yo, yo, he's all. Get ready for the Christian New Talent Jam under the theme, The Legacy Continues. This all goes down at the Miles E. Monroe Diplomat Center, Carmichael Road, Friday, November 1st at 7 p.m. To register, go to bfmilegacy.com. It's for ages 13 to 25. The categories consist of hip-hop, reggae, worship, contemporary, instrumental, dance, spoken word. For solo acts, it's $30. For group acts, it's $75. Deadline to sign up? Is October 24th. There'll be a cash prize for the overall winner. Sign up now for the Christian New Talent Jam. The legacy continues. Register again at bfmilegacy.com. For more information, call 461-6430. Looking forward to seeing you Friday, November 1st at 7 p.m. at the Miles Emanuel Diplomat Center. It's the Christian New Talent Jam, man. Listen to me, this stage has brought so many kingdom creatives. That's right. The time is now to step out and bring forth that gift God has given you. Oh, so godly. What a powerful conversation. Thank you so much to Pastor Corey and to our amazing judges for sharing their incredible journeys with us. It's truly inspiring to see the impact of BFMI's Talent Jam and how it continues to shape lives and careers. If you've been inspired today and are ready to make a difference, we'd love for you to join our volunteer team. There are plenty of opportunities to serve and to be a part of this legacy. To sign up or just get more information, just head on over to BFMILegacy.com. Thanks for tuning in to Legacy Insights. We'll see you next time for more incredible stories celebrating the past, present, and future of BFMI. God bless.